Hello, and welcome to my video. Sorry, Stuart. Um, I've been doing a lot of these sunlight through the forest paintings recently, and I just thought I'd try another one on some paper which I haven't tried before. This is Hornemule, um Anniversary Edition Aquarelle, 425 grams. And I'm not going to stretch it since it's that heavy. I'm just going to wet the back a little bit of the front and now wetting the front and hopefully the paper will stay more or less in place. Give it a good uh, thorough wetting, try and straighten it out and picking up some everybody's favourite colour at the moment, quinacridone gold. Um, paints I'm using as I was listed, listed there. Uh, Daniel Smith mostly and um, Derwent Graffitint. Um, picking a place for all the sun, leaving that white obviously. Strengthening the gold as we get further away from the sun. Tiny bit of some random brown colour I had lying around there. Mix it well in. Try and create the radial feel of the light coming from the sun. And, oh, that was the wrong colour. Can you see me pause there? <laughs> but we can probably make that disappear. Or maybe not. But um, the important thing with watercolour is not to not to try and fix things too much, just to live with what you've got. Um, so uh, that bluish colour is Moon Glow, one of my all-time favourite colours. Um, a sort of warm grey colour, again from Daniel Smith. Still painting the sky with the streaks moving towards the sun. Trying to create a, a little bit of interest, darkest in the corner, and the trusty little spray bottle. Wet the surface a little, keep working the streaks. And just trying to pull the sky down towards somewhere around the horizon. In some extra streaks in the sky, that's a dry brush, you can see just pinching the, the water out with my fingers and then adding the streaks to the sky. Having blown it dry while you were not watching, in with a, a ridge and then prop the paper up on my trusty little wooden block. Again uh, fairly neat aqua, uh, quinacridone gold. Just trying to create a, um, a headland or whatever you want to, want to call it. And some trusty old pine trees. Um, Rigger brush which sort of bounces off the paper, creates a lot of dynam dynamism. You can sort of both controlled and, and uncontrolled at the same time. And as I usually do in this sort of situation, the leftmost tree, the one nearest the edge of the paper, is invariably the tallest to stop your eye falling off the edge of the paper. Um, painted the trunks of those two trees and then just trying to push the colour up into the, the strong light with, um, with clean water. Keep working on the bottom of the of the cliff there to stop the um, so we don't get any ridges, and then just the tops of the trees, sort of which have gone over the side of the, over the, the far side of the ridge. Um, tissue paper. Keep dabbing with tissue paper. It's fairly damp at this point, which means it um, 
it just picks up the paint slightly. It doesn't um, doesn't dry doesn't dry the paint out. It just picks it up um, quite gently. And an extra tree there. A little bit of strengthening of, of that tree. And again, a dab of um, tissue paper. This is Moon Glow again. I'm sort of experimenting with different colours to see which works best. Trying to pick up the sky colour here. Same technique with the trees. They're a bit sharp at the moment, so in with the trusty spray bottle. Keep the edge loose, the bottom edge loose. And looking at it, I've uh, just done them a bit too regular, a bit too same distance apart, and same again. So we're just trying to create a more organic feel to the whole thing. And then just strengthening the feel of the ground. So drying it all off again. So moving forward. Stronger colours, a bit of green, a mixture of the um, quinacridone gold, a bit of ultramarine in there, a bit of moon glow in there, and leaving the tops of the trees with um, some definition, but the bottom again disappearing into some imaginary mist, and then stronger moon glow to, to pull that over to the left hand side of the paper beginning to hint at some the ground some some um, some ground there filling in smaller trees stronger color and just trying to let the um, filling in darker towards the bottom of the trees and leaving some small bush-like things in, almost in white, negative painting. Same, same green on the other side to maintain the balance. Loosen the bottom. A bit of variation, so there's more of the red gone into the, the same mixture. Again, with a little bit of ground in there. Trying to keep everything wet. Leaving. Um, at the moment a path through the trees try and pull you into the painting same approach on that side a bit more interest in the trees a bit more contrast towards the bottom of the trees a bush I've left there a little white bush I've left there is a bit square looking but I'm sure that disappears eventually so a little bit of water um, Starting to put in the river bank, filling in the ground there, spraying so that it runs up into the trees, trying to get the, the area nearest the water to be darkest. And just protecting it while I loosen the top of that um, the bank jutting out into the river. Same for the left the left hand side. Bring it so that the, the colours move up into the trees, creating a sort of low lying mist on the ground. Again, strengthening the, um, the ground nearest the river, trying to create a feeling of depth. 
adding dark colours further forward in the painting. Again, the bank, creating the feeling of the banks of the river. Adding a little bit of detail to the, the bushes in the, in the mid-ground there. Painting clear water through the sun and the difficulty there is obviously trying to see it um, so you can carry on with the, the tree trunk down from the water. Obviously um, a photographic technique where anything in, in front of a, the strong light and that gets completely burnt out. As you can see the paper is now starting to rock a little bit so um, the odd dab to, which becomes too thick. Just lose that with the tip of a finger and a little bit of water. I move my paintings around quite a lot. I see people people doing um, videos and they never move their painting at all, which I don't really understand how they manage that. I can't paint trees like this <laughs> without painting horizontally. Um, or depending on depending on whereabouts on the painting it might be, but just loosening the bottom of the tree so that they flow naturally into the ground. Very thin tree there. I'm doing my best to paint that one without turning. Don't find that as easy to be honest. Strengthening the foreground again. A trusty old bristle brush that I've hacked apart with um, nail clippers to, to give a very uh, uneven bristle length. Very good for just small patches of grass and creating uneven strokes as opposed to doing it one at a time with the with the rigger which is what we're doing just there. Again strengthening the the foreground. The odd little, sad little, dead failed tree, I don't know what to call it. There we go, managed to paint a straight line without, almost, without turning the page, can be done. At least on the right hand side of the painting where I've got a bit of room to do it. We've got another one, and the paint, the paper actually curling up slightly at the top there. This is the one disadvantage of, of not stretching your paper. Occasionally, you get irregular surface on the paper, which means that the, it's very difficult to control to control the, the thickness of the stroke. Which is why trees are possibly, you know, the one in the middle anyway, a little bit thick at the top. But we'll just have to live with that. I never know where to put the side branches on these trees, but just do them anyway. So, a little bit of indecision there, as you can see. Um, bark feeling. Um, there's a birch. They have black, blackish patches on the on the trunk of the tree. Slight mistake there, as you saw, drawing two small branches, and that was the paper bouncing up at me that did that. And again, there with the the paper at the top. Coming up to make the brush a little bit too much. The same there. So, 
strengthening the the land nearer the the viewer, the further forward, so making it darker, trying to create a little bit of interest in there. In the bank. some reflections, that one of the little pine tree there in the distance, softening the edge with some water, if the tree itself is soft you can't have a hard reflection and then just creating small reflections of the bank and the trees on the bank, I should probably um, Try doing these reflections a bit darker, but um, I'm happy enough with this fairly light grey at the moment. Just pick out the main trees, not every single thing you see there. Same with the other side, just darkening the, the reflection there under those bushes. And again with the, with the bank on the right hand side. Those, I mean that reflection should probably be quite a lot darker but um, maybe next time. And then my trusty bristle brush that's been mutilated, uh, fairly weak mixture of uh, mostly the, the moon glow, soften the edges with the water spray and then lift, I'm going to lift the colour with the um, nearest the sun to, to, so that looks, that looks bleached out as well and even weaker uh, mixture slightly warmer and then just dab some leaves on where you think the, pin the painting needs a bit of interest again just dabbing the trigger of the uh, spray bottle so that it's not a mist that's coming out it's more uh, well-defined drops which come out loosens the paint in places but leaves it uh, leaves it as it is in other places a bit of random grass there and again strengthening the um, the painting nearest the viewer to create the feeling of depth and then as I said just dabbing out the, the foliage with the damp paper towel there is the sun, again with that one, that one on the left there, a little bit more, and then completely removing that patch of leaves, or at least drying it out, and that's more or less it. Thanks for watching.